I think one of the most important things we can do as Christians is continually reevaluate our lives and pull the slack out. There are areas in our life where we start to drift a little bit. Maybe we let our flesh get the better, better of us in certain areas, things like this. Let's keep examining our lives, making sure that we are in faith, and then asking the Lord, asking the Holy Spirit, hey, how can I improve? What can I work on today? We want to constantly be sharpened. We want to constantly improve. The Bible talks about how every day we are actually, it does use the word predestination, but what it says is we are predestined to be conformed into the image of Jesus. Every day getting a little bit closer, every day getting a little bit better. So we're going to dive into the scriptures real quick, and I'm going to show you a couple of ways and a couple of scriptures that talk about this maybe you haven't seen before, and it's going to show us some ways that we can improve and get better because here's why that matters. We want to get better results every day. We want to get better results for God, for the kingdom, for ourselves, and for our families. So let's take a look and see what the Bible actually says on this topic and how to do it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Travis Peters, and this is The Increase Life. We teach Christians how to live a life of increase and purpose, how to make sure that each day is better than the last. Psalms 115, 14 says, May the Lord your God give you increase more and more, you and your children. The increased life is the greatest life imaginable, and we help you guys get there. We don't want you broke. We don't want you sick. We don't want you living paycheck to paycheck. We don't want you living average. We want you winning. We're going to show you exactly how to do that today. Let's go to Hebrews 12, verse 1. Now listen to what it says here. This is, this is something we may have heard before, but what's cool about God's Word is the more we read it, the more we get out of it. It is the Word of God says it's alive and powerful. It's inexhaustible, meaning each time you read it, something's going to come alive to you and that new power is going to be presented to you. So if we take a look here and we read, I'm in the Amplified Bible. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, strip off every unnecessary weight and sin, which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. So this is interesting. Strip off every unnecessary weight and sin. So it separates the two. So if you look up that word weight in the original Greek, it means a burden or something bulky. It can mean an oppressive burden. So it says strip off every oppressive burden burden. So I was reading this honestly this morning and I was like, okay, God, what are some of the weights I need to strip off so that I can run my race with endurance? I can run faster. You know, there was, if, if you go and study it out back in the Bible times in Greece, they, well, probably everywhere, but when runners ran when competitors compete they often did it naked all right knowing that this makes some of these scriptures make a little bit more sense but they often did it naked they thought if i wasn't wearing any clothes i could run faster nothing slows me down or entangles me so thinking on that and and looking from that kind of perspective so to speak what do i need to strip off so that i can run my race as one who wins. Run my race with endurance. What oppressive burdens am I carrying that are slowing me down? We want to tighten the slack in our lives. We don't want anything to slow us down. We want to get after the race that God has for us. You were put on this planet with a purpose. Let's get rid of all the junk slowing you down. Now, it could also mean literal weight. There might be some literal weight you need to strip off. It's slowing you down. The way you're eating is slowing you down. It makes you tired. Years ago, 
uh, I'll start here. Recently, I've been working on this myself. I remember also years ago, there was a time when I didn't like going to lunch. The reason was I was out at my office. I would usually go find something junky to eat because it was quick, uh, fast food, and I'd feel gross. And it would take it would slow me down. It would slow my momentum down. I would get sleepy. I'd have to come back to work. And then sometimes it would take me an hour, hour and a half, two hours before I got back in the groove. Sometimes I never got back in the groove and just the afternoon was pretty much wasted. And I started realizing this. I need to get this out of my life. I need to fix my eating habits. I need to think differently about food. And that's when I started to think about food as fuel, especially in the morning and lunchtime. Uh, now at dinner, I didn't necessarily see food as fuel, uh, but during the, the breakfast and lunch times, I did, I still do. And that's honestly changed my life. It has kept me from slowing down. It says strip off every unnecessary weight and sin, which so easily and cleverly entangles us, right? I don't want anything to slow me down. I want to be able to run. So working on that, it literally slowed me down. And then also I was losing weight. So I got skinnier. It truly took off that unnecessary weight. All right. We need to be thinking like this. Um, for me, one of the other things that was an oppressive burden was just thinking so much. This probably applies to anybody thinking so much about money and how much, how to make more money and what are we going to do with this money and how are we going to get the money for this and more and more and more? How are we going to, how are we going to, how are we going to? This is an oppressive burden. That's what that word weight means. Remember, we need to strip off these things. God, I cast the care of that to you. First Peter 5, 7. You hear me talk about it all the time on this channel. Casting all of your cares, worries, concerns, and anxieties onto him once and for all because he cares for you affectionately. He cares about you watchfully. It almost always cross-reference reference Psalms 55, 22, which just says, release every burden, every weight unto the Lord. He will sustain you. Echoing this, strip off those unnecessary weights. Thought life, what you think about. That word oppressive, and that word weight can mean oppressive burden. Oppressive just means it's unbearing, it's over, it's unbearable, it's overwhelming, it's weighty, it's heavy. What are those burdens? Most of the time it's financial, right? Sometimes it's health, sometimes it's relationship. What are those things? Okay. God, I cast the care of this over to you. I refuse to carry the burden and the weight of this. You tell me what to do. You tell me my part to play, but I know my part to play is not to worry about it. I'm not going to carry this unnecessary weight anymore. I give it over to you. We're always seeking the Lord on this. We don't just do things out of our own volition though. We always seek the Lord and get our instructions. Okay. So remember that. Let's keep reading. Strip off every unnecessary weight and sin, which easily and cleverly entangles us or slows us down. So it separates the two, weight and sin. So let's look at them as two separate things. Is there a sin in your life you know that you need to strip off? You need to get rid of it. Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's not so obvious. We've been studying a lot here on the channel about pride and how sneaky and subtle and sinful pride is. Pride comes in all kinds of forms. It comes in the form of worry. When you're worrying, you're actually in sin because you're not in faith. And everything not of faith is sin. Romans 14, I believe, says that. When we look at sin and sin this way, and we start to get I, I, I want to get savage about it, to be honest with you. Like, I want to make sure that I'm not even doing these little things. I want to be constantly improving and getting better, being transformed into the likeness and image of Christ Jesus. I want to keep getting better at this stuff. I want to pull the slack out. Here's what happens. When you pull the slack out, when you work on these things, when you develop in these things, your life gets better. Your results get better. Your outcomes get better. Your fruit gets better. Everything improves. But we got to make sure we're working on it. Most of us don't. Most of us just. Take the easy route. Most of, most people just 
chill out and coast. Not you though, not me. We're in this together, not people like us. We get better at this stuff. So what sin, and ask God for help on all this stuff. God, show me the weight I need to strip off. Show me the sin I need to work on and get out of my life forever. What one do I need to be savage to get it out? He might be like, hey, you worry too much. You need to cast that care to me. You worrying about it means, God, I don't think you can handle it. I got to do something about it. That is pride. That is sin. Pride isolates. So if you're running and hiding and ducking and covering and, oh, I don't want to face these people. I don't want to do this thing. It's too painful. All this stuff. Pride. Let's examine it. Ask God for help on this. And then let's cut it out of our lives. And it says it cleverly entangles us. There's some things that are sneaky in your life. Like I was talking about those definitions of pride. Sneaky. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race set before us. So these are characteristics of winners. These are characteristics of godly, Christian, successful people. They endure. They persist. They are active. A lot of Christians don't endure. They quit easily and quickly. They back down. If there's pressure, they say, get me out. They're not actively persistent. They are passive, a lot of passive Christians. We do not teach that here at the Increased Life. We are very active. We get after it. We know that we have to be because James told us in chapter two, and he says, if you have faith but don't have corresponding actions, if you're not active in this thing, if you're not taking action and making moves, your faith is useless. But a lot of Christians forget that part, and their faith becomes useless, just sits there. One translation says it's void of power. We don't do that. We run with endurance and we don't quit. We keep going. We, pers we pursue. We are persistent. We get after. And it says how to do this in verse 2. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith. One translation says he's the champion of our faith. I like that. But the way we do, verse one, stripping off every unnecessary weight and sin so we can run our race with endurance and active persistence, we do that by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Don't look around at the distractions. Keep your eyes on him. What does that look like? There's gonna be opportunities for you to make money and that's okay if God said, pursue those activities, those opportunities. There will be times when you get distracted from Jesus and you go and pursue things that he never had you to pursue. We got our eyes off of Jesus and we got our eyes on the money. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You'll get the money. It's fine. We're all, God wants you wealthy. He wants you successful. He wants you to have an abundant supply of finances. He wants you to win in every area of life, including your money. 100%. We teach you all that and teach you how to do all that. Just keep hanging out with us here on the channel, okay? Make sure you subscribe. There's also links in the description. Shameless plug, but we can help you with all this stuff. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You're going to win. Get distracted. You start to add on those unnecessary weights and sins that entangle you, trip you up, and slow you down. Got to pull the slack out of our lives by keeping our eyes on Jesus. When you get up in the morning, are you getting in the Word? Are you reading something? Are you hearing a faith-building sermon? Are you taking some notes? Are you praying? Are you seeking God? We, we teach in our coaching program. Every morning, we have our CEO meeting with God. We get with Him. He's the CEO of our life, the chief executive officer of our life. We get with Him. All right, Lord, what's our marching orders today? What are we doing, sir? Can you start your day like that? You keep this Bible open on your desk all day? And you keep something going in your ears while you're driving to work? Man, you're going to win. That's how we do it. Come on. Find yourself a, a, an amazing community uh, at your church. If you don't have one or, or you'd like another one that, that is always actively persisting in this stuff, man, we've got an amazing private community. Links are in the description or you can go to increaseministries.com to learn more about it. We've got an amazing community where we keep each other in this, this environment of faith. We're helping each other, sharpening each other, 
And we show up week in and week out multiple times. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. It's going to keep you charged up. It's going to keep you in a place of victory. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. Who, for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him, endured the cross. He disregarded the shame. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and his completion of work. Just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such a bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Hey, just consider what Jesus did and we compare it to what you're going through. What you're going through is nothing. It might seem like a lot, but when you compare it to the cross and all the stuff he went through, it's like, oh, I got this. This ain't no thing. God's in me. We're going to win. All right. Now, let's look over here to, oh, actually, I wanted to hit that scripture in another translation real quick. The New Living says, strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that has that easily trips us up. Again, go back to those familiar sins, like the ones the devil's been using on you your whole life. Those clever ones, those little ones, that don't seem like a big deal. Here's a hack for a successful life. Whenever you think of something that's kind of a gray area and you think, ah, it's not that big of a deal, when that phrase comes out of your mouth, stop it. It's a red flag thought. It's not that big of a deal it means it's a big deal. Satan wants you to think that it's not so you don't do anything about it. You've heard that scripture. The little foxes spoil the whole vine. It's the little things that start eating at the big things. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Eh, no biggie. They're just little foxes chewing on a little, little thing down there. But it ends up killing everything. It's a big deal. The Passion Translation says, Let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination, for the path has already been marked out before us. You've got a path. You know this. You've got a race. It's yours. It's a great one. We look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus. That's how you do it. That's how you get red and strip off those sins in those ways that slow you down. When you are looking at Jesus, what's really cool, and what I mean by looking at Jesus is getting in the word, getting in church. Go sit on the front row of your church. Man, pull out an old school pen and paper and take some notes like you care. All right? Act like you care about this stuff, man. It's going to change your life. The people who do this are the people who are winning. And not just winning in fin one area like finances, they're winning in all the areas. The areas that really matter most. This is what they do. The message translation says, Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all the veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. The exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. The cross, the shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. Man, it's so good. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. The long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline through your, through your souls. It's a cool way to put it. Go back, look at what Jesus did, and be like, okay, I got this. He put up with a whole lot more than I'm putting up with. Let's go, baby. Let's roll. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. Paul echoes this illustration of a race. He says, Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run and do their very best to win? But only one receives the prize. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Run your race in a way as one who wins. Listen to the verbiage. This is what we do in the Bible. It's a mistake we make is we read stuff and then we don't really think about what it means. We don't dissect it. 
run your race as one who wins. The one, there's only one person who wins the prize. That person runs different than the second place guy, than the third place guy, than the middle of the pack people, than the back of the pack people. Run your race as the one who wins the whole thing. That person is where? Out in front. That person trains. That person has stripped off unnecessary weights and sins that slow them down and entangle them. That person is different. The one who wins is different than the one who gets second, than the one who gets third, fourth, fifth. It didn't say be like the person who gets second place. What are you doing in your life that is alluding to second place? Are you the, are you the first one who, who shows up at church? Are people relying on you for things or do you rely on other people for things? Are you the one where it's like, hey, hey, can you save me a seat at church? Are you the one asking that or are you the one who is the seat saver? Are you the one who's the first to your workplace or are you the one who comes in second, third, fourth? Are you the first person up in your house? Or does the rest of the house wake up and then you come? Are you running this race as one who wins or the one who gets second, third, fourth, or fifth? You've got to be different to be the one who won, runs who wins. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Don't come in second in your own race. Don't come in third, fourth, or fifth. Don't come in the back of the pack. Don't come in the middle of the pack on your own race. You better win your race. Now, every athlete goes into training and competes in the games, is disciplined. He exercises self-control in all things. Check yourself. Where do you need to exercise self-control in all things? In your food? In your eating? With your tongue? With what you say? With your money? Where do you need to exercise more self-control? You might be a person who, right now, just spouts things off. You say things without thinking and you get yourself into trouble. Messes with your marriage. Messes with your kids and parenting. You always got to go apologizing all the time because you keep running your mouth. How many scriptures talk about being slow to speak, controlling your tongue, tempering your words? You need to go find those scriptures if you don't know them. That's what a person who wins does. Where do you need to exercise self-control? Pause the video. Check yourself. They do it to win a crown that withers. Meaning, they work their butts off to get a crown that means nothing. It's just a piece of metal that is perishable. But we do it for something that actually matters. An imperishable crown that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. It's pretty interesting, especially... We look at the verbiage that was over in Hebrews 12. I do not run without a definite goal. Do you have a definite goal or do you just have a direction that you're going? Maybe you don't even have that. You need a definite goal. I do not flail around like one beating the air and just shadow boxing. Meaning he's like, I don't just play around here. All right, I'm in a race. So I'm going to win it. But like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. So he's saying, man, I am playing. I'm getting after this. I pull the slack out of my life. I'm going to run my race as one who wins. I need you to do the same. There's a race set before you. Get rid of the junk. Get rid of the unnecessary weight. Get rid of the sin. Let's go run this thing as one who wins. Let's go grab the prize. Let's go seize the prize. You've got a race. It's marked out before you. These things are stuff that we need to be developing in. What I've described to you today is going to make you a better husband. I'll talk to the men for a second, but it applies to the women as well. It's going to make you a better husband. It's going to make you a better father. It's going to make you better and make a money. It's going to make you more successful in your job, business, career, ministry, whatever your race is. This right here causes all ships to rise. It causes the tide to rise and every area of your life goes up. That's what we teach at The Increased Life is we teach you how to create the life you can't wait to wake up for, where every day gets better than the last, where you win 
in all the major categories in life, in your faith, in your finances, your family, your fulfillment, even your fitness. We've got programs and we've got frameworks and we got trainings and we got a community that helps you set definite goals in all those areas and hit them. We can help you design your day in a way that makes hitting your goals automatic. That matters. This is what Paul is talking about. It's a race set before you. Let's go win it. How do we do that? It tells you right here. Exercise self-control. Be disciplined in all things. Have a definite goal. Don't just play around like you're shadow boxing. Strictly discipline your body and your mind. Let's get after it. Strip off the weight. Strip off the sin. Let's get serious. And let's go win. I love you guys. If this blessed you, would you consider joining Team Increase? You can go to increaseministries.com or check the links in the description below. If you do, I'm going to give you access to a bonus content library. It's going to help you uh, access to our private community, weekly Zoom calls with me, coaching opportunities, and some different things. And also, would you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell? It helps push the algorithm out so that these videos get seen to more Christians so we can help more people win. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.